Hello to all traders and welcome back to another Algo Builder X tutorial. In this new video we will explain the Martingale strategy in detail, with examples and some explanations of how to best and consciously use them. It is important to note that the use of Martingale and grid strategies carry significant risks in financial trading. These approaches can quickly increase market exposure and lead to substantial losses. Users are advised to fully understand the risks associated with these strategies and to use them with extreme caution. The Algo Builder X team makes no guarantee of profit or loss minimization from the use of Martingale or grid strategies. Users are responsible for their own trading decisions and should carefully consider their risk tolerance before engaging in such strategies. Users are strongly advised to backtest and use demo accounts to evaluate strategies before applying them to live trading accounts. Financial trading always involves risk, and users are expected to understand and accept these risks before using any automated strategies. To begin, we will explore the Martingale strategy, which is located within the Buy Action or Sell Action blocks, in the Manage Advanced Strategy section. This strategy allows both wins and losses to be multiplied, thus enabling efficient management of positions. The Martingale strategy is divided into two main categories that we can find for both the on-win and on-loss sections and they are multiply and reset after. Multiply represents the multiplication factor applied to the lot of the last position in case of win or loss. This value, which can be either integer or decimal, drives the proportional increase in the volume of future positions. For example, Suppose we have a position of 0.01 lots. If the multiply option on win is enabled with a value of 2 and the current position closes in profit, the next trade will be executed with a volume of 0.02 lots. As for the reset after mode, it involves resetting the position volume to the initial value after a predetermined number of consecutive trades with positive or negative outcomes. For example, suppose we set the on loss section with the following parameters multiply 2 and reset after 5. After 5 consecutive trades with a loss, on the sixth trade the position volume will return to the initial level, 0.01 lot in this case. Equally, it will work regarding on win, both multiply and reset after. But how does it work concretely? When the Martingale block is activated, it follows a sequential process based on the transaction history of the belonging group ID. Martingale block activation. The Martingale block is activated. Checking the history. The block analyzes the transaction history of the group ID associated with the last open position, which serves as a container for related transactions. Result and lot analysis. The result, profit or loss, and lot of the last trade associated with the group ID is evaluated to determine how to manage the lot size for the next trade. Application of block parameters. Using the group ID history data, the block applies internally configured parameters, including the lot multiplier, which adjusts the lot size based on the result of the last trade. Opening new position. Based on the calculations made, the Martingale block opens a new position with the appropriate lot size, considering the result of the last operation and the parameters specified in the block. Iteration and repetition. This process repeats each time the Martingale block activates, helping to update the group ID history to influence future. Let us now focus on the crucial component, namely the Martingale group ID. As we mentioned, it allows us to identify and group the trades opened by the execute trade blocks that use the Martingale strategy. Execution of the strategy takes into account only the last trade associated with that group id, neglecting other trades that have a different group id or lack one. This parameter is of fundamental importance when employed in combination with an additional buy or sell block with the same strategy. We can identify three possible scenarios. Two or more blocks with the Martingale strategy that have the same group id, which have the same group id but with different lot size and multiply which have different group ID. Let us now examine in more detail how positions are managed in these three different configurations, using practical examples for a clearer understanding. The first example involves an identical group ID. In this situation, we adopt a strategy in which the lot size is reset after each profit and multiplied after each loss for both the buy and sell blocks. 
Let us carefully examine the parameters selected for this example. When the group ID is the same in both blocks, they share the same transaction history. To illustrate this concept with a practical example, if a sell condition occurs, a trade with 0.01 lots will be opened. If that trade reaches the stop loss level and another martingale block, either buy or sell, is subsequently triggered, it will check the volume and result of the last trade of the corresponding group ID. It will use this information to reset or multiply the lot size for the next trade, taking into account its actual parameters. In this case, the next operation will be multiplied according to the value entered in the multiply field, which in this case is 2. As a result, the next trade will be opened with 0.02 lots. If this position also suffers a stop loss and subsequently the martingale block is triggered, it will, as before, check the history and see that the last trade was a loss of 0.02 lots. Therefore, it will multiply that lot size by its multiplier, bringing the volume of the next trade to 0.04 lots and so on, until the take profit is reached where the lot size will be reset to 0.01. It is important to note that regardless of the type of trade, buy or sell, in case of martingale blocks with the same group ID, when triggered, they will always check the last position in the history of that group and open the next trade according to the parameters configured in it. But what if the martingale blocks have the same group ID but the lot and multiplier is different? This configuration is the most complex to explain and also to use. We suggest you always use the same group ID with identical lots and multipliers. But let's see how it would behave, starting with a buy condition and opening with a lot of 0.05, incurring a stop loss. Now a sell condition occurs. Let us consider that the multiplier for the sell block is 3. However, the last position, having the same group ID, will be the buy position and thus 0.05 lots. Therefore, we should multiply 0.05 by 3 which is the multiplier, and we will open a selling position with a lot size of 0.15. In case this position suffers a stop loss and a buy condition occurs, we should take the last lot and multiply it by the buy multiplier. The result will then be 0.15 lots multiplied by 2, and we will go on to open a 0.30 lot buy position. Even if the conditions do not occur by alternating buying and selling, it does not matter. As we can see now, if another buy condition occurs, we will multiply the 0.30 lot by 2, thus opening a 0.60 lot buy position. Again, if we hit a stop loss and a sell condition occurs, the last trade at 0.60 lots will be multiplied with the sell settings, thus resulting in 0.60 lots multiplied by 3. The new position will then be 1.8 lots, and so on until we reach our take profit, which will bring the lot back to the initial value. In this case, it will depend on whether the condition is selling or buying. In the proposed example, a sell condition occurs and will open with a 0.10 lot. Thus, as we mentioned earlier, the first condition that occurs will dominate until the take profit is reached or a trade limit is reached. Let us now examine the last example, where we find a different group ID. Considering the following configurations for the buy martingale block and the sell martingale block, in this context, both the lot and the multiplier for the group are different depending on the type of trade but let's delve into how positions are handled in this situation. It is important to first point out that when there is a different group ID, it is as if each martingale strategy is independent. Therefore, when the sell condition occurs, we will open a 0.05 lot position. Regardless of the outcome of this position, if a buy condition occurs, we will open the lot at 0.03. The lot will not be multiplied because the loss is part of the other group ID. However, since the two strategies operate independently, when a new sell condition opens, the martingale sell block will check the last trade of its belonging group ID, finding the previously losing trade. The opening will be with 0.05 lot multiplied by 3, so we will open a 0.15 lot sell position. Similarly, for buying, having opened with an initial position of 0.03, we will multiply it by 2 and open a 0.06 lot position and so on with the next selling condition, where, having taken the stop loss again, we will open a 0.45 lot position. This position goes into profit, so the multiplier of group id1 is reset to the starting lot of the block. When a new buy position is opened, it will be multiplied again since the last trade in its group is still a loss. 
we will double the 0.06 lot and open a 0.12 lot position, continuing in this way until the positions reach the take profit and reset to the initial lot. In this example, the sell condition will open at 0.05 lots, while the buy condition will open at 0.03 lots. I hope this explanation has made you fully understand how the Martingale block works. Don't miss the next video tutorial. ABX, Custom Strategies, Made Easy.